Hey friends, it is time for another unboxing video. These are my favorite. I don't know why unboxing days are so fun, but they are. Here we go. Now I just sounded like Charlie Kirk. <laughs> if you watch the Charlie Kirk show, you know exactly what I'm talking about. His introduction every single time. But let's dive in to our Azure standard order for the month of June. Now this order, I actually have a lot smaller packages than usual in our Azure standard order because my five gallon buckets are getting full, which is good. And at this point, I'm still searching for a little bit more space in our apartment to figure out where I can maybe make some more room and store some in an area that doesn't get humid, that doesn't have huge temperature fluctuations, and that um, you know isn't sitting out in the middle of our living room where I'd have to decorate them to try and make them look like they fit into our decor. So I'm all about living prepared, working out of bulk food uh, storage without everybody walking into your home and immediately knowing that that is what you're doing. So let's dive on into today's order. I do have one really large bag. And this is my 25 pound bag. It's really hard to lift up when you're sitting on the floor. It's my 25 pound bag of wheat berries. And this is the hard white winter wheat. Let's put these over here. Hard white wheat. And I use those in our baking on a regular basis. So I have bread going and just about very sprouting almost 24 seven at this point in order for me to stay up on having enough sprouted wheat berries to make our sandwich bread, to make our pizza dough, to make our rolls, cinnamon rolls, you know, all the good things using the basic bread dough recipe from Carolyn at the Homesteading Family from her bread class. Um, I feel like I promote this class in almost every video. I am not an affiliate with them, you guys. It's just a really great class. So anyway, I use the hard white wheat for that and you normally wouldn't need to be sprouting berries on a super, super regular basis like that if you have a dehydrator or more space than what we have. But I have found that in our oven and with um, just the utilities that we have, two cups is all I can do at a time. So I like to keep us in bread and have a backup so we're not running out of bread. And we just always have something that we can pull from. And so I've gotten into a rhythm with that. Soon I'll be jumping back into sourdough and we'll see if I need to be doing that extensive thing. But we're going through wheat berries, all of that to say, like crazy. So though it was just a few months ago that we got our first 25 pound bag of wheat berries, my bucket is starting to get low and I don't want that to run out. So we got some more. All right, jumping right along, we have, this is a five pound bag of garbanzo beans. I'm excited to have garbanzo beans on hand this year because I want to start making my own hummus again. This is something I did years ago before I met Chris and uh, was just living in an apartment by myself, but I didn't do it on a super regular basis. I just made it occasionally. It was delicious. I'd love to get to where I'm making it on a regular basis. So a bunch of garbanzo beans, chickpeas, whatever you wanna call them. Also going to try there is a recipe in one of Clinton Kelly's books. I can't remember whether it was freaking fabulous or freaking fabulous on a budget. It's one of those two books. He has a spiced garbanzo bean recipe for parties and hors d'oeuvres. And so I'm planning to make that this week for one of the groups that I'm part of where we all bring tapas on a Wednesday. So we'll see how that goes, but I'm excited to have garbanzo beans back and we ran out of pinto beans. That's not okay with as many tacos as we eat. So we have a five pound bag of pinto beans. I would eventually like to get us up to probably a 25 pound bag of this into a five gallon bucket. But again, gotta find space for some more five gallon buckets. So right now we're going with five pounds. These are just dried pinto beans. We make them, you know, soak them overnight and then cook them during the day. We make just flavored pinto beans. We make um, 
refry beans, sometimes using lard. I'm still working on my lard ratio with the pinto beans though, because what I've been following has made them not as good as I would like them to be. So, moving along. Active dry yeast. Now this is something we are not yet out of. However, I wanna stay ahead of the game because what was the first thing? Do you guys remember at the beginning of all of the craziness in 2020 and lockdown stuff started happening and things started flying off of shelves? The first thing to go was bread. I felt like bread was the first thing to go and then I was like, well, that's fine because I don't buy store-bought bread anyway. I make our bread most of the time. But then trying to find yeast was like next to impossible, which is one of the benefits of sourdough because you have your own homemade yeast. But just because it's a good emergency thing and yeast stores really well in the freezer. So you can freeze yeast and keep it for years in the freezer. So I grabbed a little bit more of that so that we have plenty just in case. Part of that living prepared thing. Then this is a smaller bag of almonds than I would like, but y'all truly raw organic almonds are expensive. <laughs> so two pounds is all I got this time. Slowly building up our stash. I do put these, I soak them and they are delicious. I use them in our granola that I make a soaked granola recipe and a couple of you guys have requested that I do a video on the granola recipe and so watch for that coming soon. We still have some granola but on the next time I make it the next round I will go ahead and do a video with that so we will have one coming very very soon but true raw almonds these are truly raw because any almonds that you buy in the United States that are labeled raw almonds are actually not raw they have indeed been pasteurized thanks to FDA regulations, but they are not grown here, which these were not. Um, I was looking to see if it said where they were grown. I can't remember. I feel like Italy, but I could be making that up. So don't take my word on that. Uh, it does say on the Azure website where they're grown, but I don't remember. But they are truly raw. That's why they're labeled truly raw because these have not been pasteurized which is what I want, the enzymes in the nuts. I don't want them all killed. Then I got us some pine nuts. We were trying to grow some basil. I was growing basil. So pine nuts and basil equals pesto. Of course you need some olive oil and salt, you know, but Parmesan cheese, extra ingredients. But I was stocking us up on some pine nuts because you gotta get them in bulk or they just get really expensive at the store. And so I was buying some bulk. This is just a pound of pine nuts. Hoping to use our basil fresh on our garden. But something happened. I will be doing a garden update video here soon. My last starts that I did, I don't know if a fungus got in the soil or what, but the starts just were all doing really well and then just kaputted. So we're gonna have to buy some basil starts to replace the starts that I had done from seed. I, it's got to have been the soil because everything in that start container is gone and was doing really well. So that's very sad, but it's the first year of a balcony garden. So it can only get better from here, right? My first set of starts worked great. We'll try again with the fall plants, but I do have really thriving some plants that are doing really well on our balcony garden right now watch for an update video coming very soon on that last but not least actually this is not the last thing I just didn't pull the other thing out we got lemons too so some good organic lemons they're in the refrigerator I forgot to bring them over here so imagine me holding a bag of lemons okay now the last thing is some split green peas you guys know as we are building our prepared lifestyle, our pantry, really a fully stocked, well-rounded pantry, because I realized we rely way too much on the grocery store and the fact that we could walk to natural grocers that we weren't stocking things. And so then like shortages happened and I was like, oh, we got peanut butter. <laughs> so 
I want to be sure that we have a well-rounded pantry so that if anything were to come up again, I mean, there's emergencies all the time with different things, then we are eating from a well-stocked, nutrient-packed pantry and not just eating peanut butter all the time or canned tuna all the time, you know, that we've got a variety of foods. So we're slowly working on building that up, but some split green peas is in there too. Hubby really wanted to make split pea soup this fall, or this winter, sorry, earlier this year. Actually, I think it was the spring. One of the seasons, friends, Ooh. okay. <laughs> so one of the seasons, um, I think it was early spring, he was wanting to make split pea soup and we didn't have split peas. We could have gone to the store to get them but we had beans and we did that. But now we have split peas. For the next time, we wanna make split pea soup. So what are your favorite ways to use split peas? Do you have favorite recipes other than split pea soup? And let me know in the comments below. Look forward to chatting with you guys again real soon. This week, Thursday's video will be an oil along with me day. Come oil with me. I get questions all the time of how I use essential oils all day long in my products, what my normal day looks like with that, with supplements and all sorts of things, oil, essential oils and oil infused products. So come check that out on Thursday. I will have a video on that. Until next time, take care friends. Cheers.